Out of every 100 victims of campus sexual assault, only five will report it to police. What we know is that the vast majority of survivors of sexual violence never come forward. They don't go forward to law enforcement. They don't necessarily come forward to advocacy uh, offices like mine. That statistic, quoted by several universities, is often debated because many, like Laura Luciano with the Rutgers Office of Violence Prevention, say it's probably even higher. In our student code of conduct, um, sexual, sexual assault has always been what we call a separable offense, meaning that if someone's found responsible, they can be removed moved from the university community. College campuses around the state and nation are taking a closer look at current sexual misconduct policies. Just this week, Princeton University approved changes to the school's guidelines. Among other things, it calls for adjudication to be led by a team of three trained investigators instead of students and staff. It also gives victims the right to bring a lawyer or advisor to all meetings and lowers the burden of proof from clear and persuasive to a preponderance of evidence meaning more likely than not. A federal law called the Cleary Act also requires all colleges to keep stats on the crimes and post them. We have to do a daily log. That daily log has to be um, available for 90 days and the logs are also kept for, I believe, seven years. Um, Cleary statistics are reported annually. Earlier this year, the White House released a report on campus sex crimes, and the results were pretty startling. About 75 to 80 percent of those assaulted will know their attackers, and it said that most will happen during their freshman or sophomore year, usually while intoxicated. We were one of the first schools in the nation to have an on-campus sexual assault response team. At Montclair State University, Dr. Karen Pennington says sexual assault crimes have always been taken seriously, typically resulting in expulsion. We have uh, a Title IX coordinator who has been trained to handle those types of investigations, to talk to the students involved, to see what kind of information can be brought forward. And according to the U.S. Department of Education, among all public and private higher ed institutions in New Jersey, there were 67 forcible sexual offenses on campus for 2010, 78 in 2011, and 81 in 2012. The biggest challenge is getting students to come forward and admit that something happened. People are embarrassed. They feel that they've done something to provoke it. They don't want to have people think of them differently. Which is why those at the forefront say the key to it all is not just harsher penalties, but prevention, starting the conversation earlier than the first day of college. In New Brunswick, I'm Brianna Benozzi, NJTV News.